and we are live. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully, I managed to scare you, because if I scared you, I, I made your adrenaline pumping, which is great. It puts you in the vibe for my stream. I, I want a full-on adrenaline stream, because uh, tensions are high on Twitter. People are angry, and uh, we need to discuss why that anger is taking place. Uh, it seems to be Boogie and Matt Walsh right now. They, they are the stars. Um, in fact, hello, Kulvik. I, I will even make a video about Boogie. Boogie, I already made a video about Matt Walsh. I, I find it hilarious. You know, <clears throat> Matt Walsh, you need to understand him. You, you need to get into his head. He is not a difficult person to understand. He is part of the American right wing that is more boomerish. Uh, these individuals that are, are, are part of like the more boober era, uh, they believe that life is about three things. Life is about Jesus, fishing, and family stuff. Okay, so like grilling, barbecuing, uh, spending time with your kids in front of the television, watching football, fishing, uh, going to Sunday church, fishing. A any deviation from this is, is wrong. Okay, any deviation from this scares them, it is evil, and therefore it must be purged. So, so nothing outside of fishing, not, not, nothing outside of Jesus, and nothing outside of your suburban home uh, spending time with the family, right? Uh, so these people are afraid of video games. It, it frightens them. They do not understand them. I, I, I am curious how Matt Walsh would react to a video game that has fishing in it. That, that would be interesting to see, like, like someone needs to, hello Todd, someone needs to get Matt Walsh to play um, a fishing simulator, right? But, but this is how I imagine Matt Walsh, so um, let, let's look at the suburban American home, okay? Uh, I, I think this one is too wealthy, ah, there we go, I, I, I think I, I managed to find just the thing, right? So, so this is how I picture Matt Walsh. Now, hopefully I'm not doxing him because uh, last time I showed an image of a hipster. Um, there were other hipsters complaining that it's an image of them, but it wasn't. It wasn't. like I, it, it was just an image of a random hipster, but other people identified. So now I'm going to show what I believe Matt Walsh's house looks like. So I hope, heaven forbid, because these people live such similar lives. I, I hope that I do not accidentally dox Matt Walsh, but I don't think so, right? So this is a stock photo, right? It's, it's taken from Google. This is, this is how I imagine Matt Walsh's house to look like, right? Like, like if, you, if you make me stereotype Matt Walsh, this is exactly, you know, with, with the grass perfectly cut. Uh, there should be a gate somewhere, though. Like, maybe the community is gated. Uh, maybe, maybe he's got, like, a, a basketball hoop around, you know, the, the back or something. Uh, definitely a grill. Definitely a grill in the backyard. And many, many children. Okay? Many, many kids. And they go to Sunday church, right? Like they read the Bible there with Jesus. And they go fishing. That is the extent of their personal experience. That is their lives. Okay? Anything that deviates from this, they are afraid of it. It, it, it scares them. Anime frightens them. Video games, scary. Any, anything that's not Jesus and fishing, okay? So, um, when Matt Walsh makes fun of gamers, I, I gotta understand what Matt Walsh is. Like, I, I gotta enter his brain and understand him. And I know he doesn't mean, like, he's not mean-spirited, right? Now, now, if he could, he would take video games away from me. If he could, Matt Walsh would walk into my house and take away my video games, if he had the power, but fortunately he does not have the power, right? Uh, so, so the only thing he can do is to bitch and complain on YouTube. Um, but but you gotta understand, you know, these people exist, they vote, uh, they, they are integrated into society, and th they have their own, you know, opinions uh, that everyone should live like them, which is not necessarily a bad life, mind you, but it's not for everyone. Like, I, for instance, would, would not be able to live such a boring fucking mundane life. But other people may like it, right? So, um, he basically wants everyone to live like this. It's kind of like a communist wants equality, but he doesn't know it. Uh, because he feels safe. He feels safe when other people live like him, 
right? So like in a community with, with all Matt Walsh's, that's when the Matt Walsh's feel safe. If they know that someone in that community plays Call of Duty, all the Matt Walsh's feel unsafe because that, that takes time away from Jesus. It takes time away from fishing. And that person may actually be a psychopath because why does he want to play video games where he murders people? Are, are we clear? Like, like did, did, did we manage to get into the psyche of Matt Walsh? Am I, am I accurate? Huh? Am I close? Th this is how I view right-wing Americans over the age of 45. Am I, huh? Raining terror, was I correct? Right, anime is satanic. Yes, everything that's not fishing and Jesus is satanic. What don't you understand? Right, like God created fishing. God is good. Everything outside of that is satanic. That is the, the, how I would describe Matt Walsh's worldview. Did God create the Democrats? No, therefore. It's not, it's not difficult to understand. Hi V, I hope uh, you are well. But I like fishing and hunting. But I like Matt. He is from an urban setting and I'm from a rural setting. So we're at odds. Yeah, I'm, again, I'm not saying that it's wrong to like God or to like fishing. But, but there are certain people that this is the limit of their experience. Okay, like this is the limit of their knowledge. They do not want to expand it past that. It's like, it, it is what it is. Everything outside this scares them. Literally, it, it frightens them, right? If you talk about anime, it's satanic because it's not part of the, the, the lived experience. They're different from us, which means they can't be trusted, you know? Um, <clears throat> Don't quit my day job. Don't plan on it. He is a gun grabber for video games. Yes, like Matt Walsh. Would go into your house and give you a gun, but take away the gun from your video games. And ironically, yes, like he, he would definitely do this. He would go into your house, and, and he believes that it's a human right to have a gun. And, and like the commies who believe it's a human right to, to have health care, Matt Walsh, if he had the power, he would get the government to give you a gun. Right? So like from people's taxes, the government would give you a gun. Uh, but he would take away the gun from your video games. Right? So, like, if you're playing uh, Counter-Strike, you would take away your op. You, you would go into your video game and no, this is dangerous, and he would take it away from you. I wonder what Matt Walsh would think if you had, like, video games where you're fighting at, uh, at a range. So, like, you're not killing people, but you're just, uh, you know, having a video game where you're going hunting. Having a video game where you're uh, target practicing. Looking uh, inside Matt's house, I think V isn't too far <laughs> from that picture. Dude, I don't know how I do it. Like, like short fat otaku is absolutely bewildered, right? He, he would often go into a disagreement with me. And he would be like, V, do you have evidence? I'm like, no, but this is how it is. And it's like, V, you can't, you can't claim things without evidence. And then after a couple of days, it is how I said it was. And, and short fat otaku is just mind fucked. It's like, how, how do you do this, V? How do you do this? The same way I did it with Matt Walsh. I, I have never seen a picture of his house. I have never... No, unironically, I don't know where the man lives. Like, he can live in a communist era building, and I wouldn't fucking know. However, this is how I imagine it in my head, and apparently people in the chat are saying that I'm right. Right? And I, I assume the life of Matt Walsh is he goes to work, <clears throat> comes back home, he's got many kids... Uh, he's, he's setting the chores for the kids to do. Like, you take out the garbage, you mow the lawn, you do this and that. And, and, and what he does is that whenever something breaks, like a pipe breaks, he goes and he fixes it. He, he never, Matt Walsh never calls the plumber. He fixes it himself. Even though he has the money to call the plumber. No, I, I think that Matt Walsh is the type of person that goes on his fucking roof. He goes on his fucking roof and he fixes the roof. May I even suggest that, that, no, this is a little bit too extreme. This is a little bit too extreme. I don't think he actually does this, but I wouldn't be surprised if he does. He washes the car himself. He's got a hose and he goes to the car and he washes it by hand himself. He does not take his car to a car wash. He does it by hand himself. What do you think, Chad? Do you think Matt Walsh is the type of person that washes the car himself? Is it, is it that extreme? Huh? Is, it, is, is he like one of those people that goes out in the summer when, when it's like 30 degrees outside with a hose, with a gardening hose, and he washes the car by hand himself? Even though he has money to take it to the car wash is the fucking principle of it. 
He, fe- he feels that it's manly. It's very manly to do, huh? Or get his kids to do it. No, I, th- I think like this is... Um, every man needs to wash his own car. You can't wash the car of another man, even if it's your father. Even if it's your father, it's not appropriate to wash the car of another man. Unless you work at a car wash. If you work at a car wash, you are allowed to, wa- to, to wash the cars of other people. It is not weird. Uh, Matt Walsh would call a plumber, but only a plumber that got there through nepotistic ties with the other people that he allows into his life. <laughs> that, that, that is probably... Fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he, he does look like the person that has, like, the family plumber. Like, he, he doesn't actually go online to look for a plumber or, or to try and find a plumbing company. No, like, like, he actually knows a plumber that worked in his family since his father was there, you know? Um, but anyway... My point is, people are upset that this individual, by the name of Matt Walsh, which, as I mentioned before, like, once you understand the type of person he he is, you understand the type of people he represents. For those of you who joined a little bit later, my, my theory is that Matt Walsh likes God, likes Jesus, and he likes fishing. And everything else outside of this is blasphemous and it's satanic. Henceforth, anime is satanic. Video games are satanic, right? Uh, and because of that, he made a video about Gamergate three days ago. It was actually a really great video, I think. Like, he uh, he made a really good presentation where he explains why people are upset on the internet. Uh, I, I think that the video was pretty good. But he did say that no one talks about wokeness in video games and he is one of the first to do it. And I think, like, this is what upset a lot of people, right? And, and people started doing the offense necromancy and they were pulling old tweets and they were saying that, uh, look, Matt Walsh, Matt, you're not an ally of the gamers, right? Like, you, you do, do, not, do not dare to say that all of a sudden you care about gamers because you don't. Like, here's your tweets from 2018. Now, let me see if I can find them. Because he was very vocal about it. Ah, there we go. Um, and this is why the right-wingers have lost, by the way. One of the main reasons, I would say. Uh, video games are a sacred cow in this country, and I'm tired of it, says Matt Walsh in 2018. Our country is filled with adults who are obsessed with them, so we must all pretend insanely that there's nothing wrong or disturbing about a child spending all day killing people in a virtual world. Again, if you're not obsessed with fishing or you're sitting at home not reading the Bible and talking about Jesus, Matt Walsh thinks it's a problem, right? Like, in any other hobby besides fishing, grilling, Jesus, it's an obsession that has to be purged from society. Uh, of course, it's harmful to the child, right? Fishing isn't harmful. Jesus isn't harmful. Like, those, those are your options. This is outside of the range of expertise. It's harmful to anyone, adults included, Will it automatically make a kid into a mass shooter? No, and nobody in the world has ever made that claim, but it's harming him. Right? It's kind of like um, the the progressives that are on Twitter now. And there are like, why do you watch My Hero Academia? I mean, well, because it's an anime, it's fine. Yes, but they are but a child. Why do you lust after the big titties of Bubblegum Girl? Don't you know that she is 17? She is but a child. And it's like, okay, so you're saying that it... No, I'm not saying that it is harmful. I am saying that it is weird. And we need to face the fact that you like Uzaki-chan, which is minor coded, and it is weird. Right? Like, it's kind of like that. It's kind of like that. You know, like, but, but like the, these other people, they only know woke shit. Like, they only know furry diaper porn. Like, that, that is their experience, right? Like, if it's not furry shit, if it's not Abby from The Last of Us, it frightens them. It frightens that like Matt Walsh is the previous generation. He he comes from a time before this. And his time was how I mentioned it with football, grilling, and right the, the new man, the new American, he likes furry diaper porn, he likes Abby from The Last of Us 2, right? He likes body type A, body type B. When he sees my hero academia or Uzaki Chan, it's a new experience that they have no access to. And it frightens them. It's like, well, they must be weird because these people are not like me. They like different things. So because of this tweet, people are upset. 
right? Now, now the reason that right wingers have lost the culture war is because the left has invested not just billions, if not trillions, of dollars into making sure that every single aspect of entertainment pushes woke ideology. But it's also due to the fact that they care about video games. Like, the, the left cares so much about video games that if you take Spider-Man 2 and you try to remove the, the flags from Spider-Man 2 on a personal mod, which only affects your computer, they have people in charge of Nexus mods that will ban that mod. They, they want to forbid you from being able to download and customize your video game to your liking. They will say, yay, like horses, high on ivermectin. You will play the games we demand you play. If, if there is a statement that the previous Tomb Raider game was racist, sexist, misogynistic, and someone tries to remove that disclaimer, they will say, no, we demand that you play the games the way they are. Right? And how do they do that? Because they have people in positions of power. They place people at the hand of Nexus Mods. They place people in, in companies. Like, you, you do not get to this level by accident. Right? The, the left ideological group has managed to infiltrate every single aspect to the point where you cannot customize a program on your computer unless you invest a lot of time. Like, it's incredibly difficult to get a mod now that goes against leftist orthodoxy. You have Baldur's Gate 3, and, and the left talks about how important diversity is and how important it is to see yourself. So if someone tries to take the character Will and, and through a patch make Will white, Nexus mods will ban that. But if someone tries to make every single character black, Nexus mods will allow that, right? Like, I, I, I want you to understand. That, that from the company to the people that are, are managing the websites for moderations, to the, to the mainstream journalists, through all of these things, leftists everywhere. Where was the right when this was happening? Well, the right was like uh, video games are, are, are for children. Uh, they're, they're, I, I don't understand them. Uh, they, they, they are harmful. Uh, I don't even want to touch them, right? So, so with this mentality, they fucking lost. They, like, they didn't even try to take on the battlefield. There are some people that do. Uh, Alex Jones made a very successful video game. Very popular. It's sad that Matt Walsh isn't making his own video game. I mean, he has the money and, and he would actually manage to make a killing. You can make a video game where Matt Walsh is, you know, like, like obviously he doesn't have to make him to himself. But he has the money to pay people that can make it. He can pay for developers that got fired from the gaming industry because of their ideology. I know many of them from Blizzard, from Ubisoft, from EA Games, people that got fired. And, and, and we know, I mean, Matt Walsh himself knows now, like he, he's got a lady that works at EA Games and she says she would never hire white people, right? So like the people that she wouldn't hire, Matt Walsh could hire, they could make a video game. It's not hard to make a video game. You got engines now that you can just... You know, you didn't have the engines back in the day. Like in, in 2014, you, you had to make your own engine if you wanted to make a video game. And that was very difficult. Very time-consuming as well. But now you have that done for you. So making a video game, $30,000, you can just make something good. Uh... And with the video game, you can actually spread your ideas. You can make a video game that pushes the power of friendship, that, that promotes family units. I mean, you can make a video game about a mother that is trying to keep her children safe during France in World War I. That would be an interesting thing, you know? Like, you, you, you can do stuff that the left wouldn't even fucking remotely touch. And they would be very interesting and appealing to the public. Again, the reason they hate anime <clears throat> isn't because anime is trying to debunk woke ideology. Is that anime is wholesome. Its aesthetics are attractive. It drives people to try and play and try and watch anime. And the reason that the left hates it is because, well, look at Naruto. What does it teach? The power of friendship, working hard, 
loving one's country, sacrificing yourself for the village. Like, it, all these things they absolutely despise. And the fact that the main character is a guy. So, right-wingers could I actually do have an opportunity. I, I see Elon Musk tweeting about game. It would be interesting if Elon Musk starts a gaming company. He does have the fucking money to do it. Like, he's, a, he's the world's richest guy. He's got trillions of dollars. He, he, he can literally spend five millions to make his own video game. But we're not going to see that. Which is fine. You know, I'll, I'll do my game. I'll have less competition. Um, hopefully other people will, uh, other content creators will try making video games as well. A wild German appeared. He used Super Chat. It is not very effective. V used Remorse. It is very effective. German fainted. Well, danke schön, Lord Valtzen. Uh Hi V, there's some buyer's remorse. I find it funny that Walsh burned through all the goodwill from what is a woman and lady ballers from his usual lazy journalism. I mean, he was trapped between a, a a rock and an anvil, right? Like, people wanted him to talk about Gamergate. Uh, people would have been upset if he didn't. Now that he did, people are upset. But I don't think that the fact that he talked about it is the issue. I think that going out and saying, oh, no one talks about wokeness in video games besides I, I think that's what pissed off people. And then he had a couple of colleagues from his publication going around and uh, trying to do damage control for him while insulting gamers. I think these are the two issues that burned the goodwill. The thing is, like, this is a short-term loss, right? So it's a short-term loss. I don't know, like, how is it going to look like in the long run. So it remains to, to, to be seen if the goodwill is lost. Um, the thing is, like, while I do understand that Matt Walsh is not an ally of gamers... I also understand that he reaches an audience that I do not. And, and, and that audience is one that quartering doesn't reach either. Again, it's, it's the audience of these people, right? It's the audience of the people that like Jesus and fishing. And these people have a right to vote. Now, if those people vote for the same stuff that I do, even though we don't like each other, that's great. Okay, so uh, if Matt Walsh says, hey, uh, I know you guys think video games are evil, but the left is trying to co-opt it and your children are playing those video games. Then if these people vote against the Democrats, that's great. Great. I, I don't care. You know, fine. I mean, Elon Musk tweeted Matt Walsh's video. He's got millions of views because of it. Quartering doesn't get that many, by the way. Why would I complain? I'm not, I'm not friends with Matt Walsh. I don't go behind his house to do barbecue. Right? We don't grill together. I, I don't want to get in a business relationship with him where I'm afraid that, that he may not be serious enough to... He made a video about Gamergate. And he let other people know about it. Perfect. That's, that's what I care. I, I don't understand where the controversy is at, to be honest. Was he disingenuous? Yes. Sure. Matt Walsh calls his fan Sweet Baby Gang. <laughs> uh, he also said the solution to keeping your kids from woke journalists is to stop them from playing games. Don't forget that. Yeah, but like, again, will kids stop playing games because Matt Walsh said so? I mean, th this is another... ...comprehend, right? Uh, and, and this is where they constantly fail and why the left keeps winning. Back in the 1990s, okay, back in the 1990s, if you didn't want your kid to play video games, he would not play video games. Period. Like, like being a, a person that plays video games in the 90s, um, you needed your parents to buy you a computer, which was very expensive, and there weren't that many people that played video games. I mean, you, I remember going to school and there was one, maybe two other guys that had a computer at home and they played video games, right? But we're not in the 1990s anymore. It's 2024. Every single kid at some point is going to get a cell phone or a tablet. I mean, your kid is going to go to school 
and everyone is going to have a tablet. And and if you don't give your kid a tablet, he's going to be unpopular. He's going to be the one having difficulty forming friendships. He's going to be the oddball out, and, and he's going to resent you. He's going to hate you. You know, like, like there are parents that compare their kids with other kids. Your kid compares you with other parents, and he's not going to understand why he can't have a tablet. He's going to be like, everybody has a tablet, Dad. Everybody has a tablet. Why can't I? You know, and, and you can delay him getting a tablet all the way until he's 14. Sure. But at some point, he's going to get a fucking tablet from his own cash. Like, even if you don't give him money to a tablet, tablets can be so cheap that he can actually get money from a friend. He can get another tablet from a friend. And if you throw it away, well, at one point, he's going to be 18 and he's going to spit on you. And he's going to be like, fuck you, father. You know, like, you, you were the most awful dad. Everyone else was, and you're not going to be able to reason with them. Uh, th th this idea of like strict parenting works in fiction, but in reality, we were kids as well. Like there, there is nothing makes a kid more of a rebel than when you make rules that they don't understand. Like if you make a rule that's like, uh, don't put your hand in the stove because it's hot and it burns, then your kid goes like, yeah, no, this is a good father. Like he, he taught me a life lesson. But if you teach our kid, uh, you need to spin around the, the house three times before going in. Otherwise, you're going to get a spanking. It's going to be like, that's unreasonable. That's irrational. No one else has to do this. Why is it me? What did I do wrong that I have to do this bizarre uh, thing or, or dad gets angry? Why does dad get angry? What is his problem? Right? Like, if things aren't logical and, and you can't explain to the kid logically, you don't get a tablet. When everyone else has one, right? So anyway, my point is, in 2024, everyone has a tablet. Everyone plays video games. No exception. Every single person plays fucking video games. It, it is more difficult to find a person that doesn't play video games that is younger than me nowadays. Even, like, what, b before my mom passed away, she was playing video games as well. Everybody plays video games, right? It's not the 90s, so... If you say, oh, kids shouldn't play video games, yeah, okay, boomer, sure, sure, yeah, uh, Matt Walsh and, and his complete delusion. Um, <clears throat> no kids in my circles have access to smartphones and tablets and unfiltered internet. Uh, sure, but like when they're 14. Do you not think that they're going to have access to tablets and phones? Now, now you can say, well, the internet is filtered. I guarantee to you they know how to unfilter it. Uh, strict parenting only works when the kid is naturally obedient already, like in my case. Uh, I think strict parenting works if your rules make logical sense. So like if the if you are having logical rules, like don't play in the street because a car can run over you. Uh, you need to go to bed because otherwise you're going to be tired tomorrow. You know, if, if your rules are logical, then that's fine. But but if you're telling your kid don't do this, like, like a perfect example, right? The other day, literally the other day, I saw this TikTok video with a guy was a Zoomer. And, and uh, he was, I bought an apartment and now no one will know that I, I, I'm throwing the oil, the cooking oil into the sink. Right? And, and he filmed himself dumping the cooking oil into the sink. Why did he do that? Apparently, he genuinely didn't know because you read it in the comment section and he found out. His parents never told him, don't do this because it clogs the sink. His parents only said, don't do this, period. And if you do this, you get punished. Right? That's not a good way to educate anyone. That, like, he doesn't know, right? Like, oh, why, how, how can he not know? How can he not? Well, you don't know everything either. Right? He what he didn't know because it was never explained to him. That's why. Um Remember the guy that lit himself on fire? He was raised as a fundamental Christian. Yeah. Yeah, it does it doesn't surprise me, right? Because like when you have all these bizarre rules that can't be explained away, then you're you're going to have a lot of resentment. Didn't DSP do that in his cooking video? Yeah, many people do. And, and I will tell you another thing. You know, like some people know it clogs the sink. Um, but until it actually, like, until they actually see the sink getting clogged, 
They won't believe it. Like that that's an issue, you know? Like like when when you have kids and your sink gets clogged, you should call them and say, look, this is what happened. Because we, we clogged it. it the, the, like, they can understand the science of it, right? Like, they can understand that oil and water doesn't mix. But if they see that you drop oil into the sink and it doesn't clog, because sometimes it doesn't, right? Like, it doesn't clog automatically. So if you drop oil into the sink and it doesn't clog, they'll think it's okay. Sure. DSP threw it into the toilet, though. So DSP took the cookie oil and threw it into the toilet. I, I You know, like, like, it's fine. Maybe he assumed that the pipes are bigger. I don't fucking know why he did it. Maybe he thought, well, the, the toilet has bigger pipes, so it's more difficult to clog. But he did it. Yeah, he, he threw the cooking oil into the, the, into the toilet, and then when he took a shower... His, it, it came from from the um, from the shower exhaust, whatever the fuck it's called, right? It, it like his entire shower flooded with with toilet water, and, and that's when he realized, oh, I guess the internet was right. I guess I guess mommy and daddy was right. Where should you throw it? See, this is another thing. Uh, if you ask that question, a lot of people will mock you. Where you should throw it. I, I will tell you where you throw the cooking oil. You take a jar. It, it can be like any jar that you have in your house. A pickle jar that you finish the pickles. Uh, a mayonnaise jar that's empty. Uh, a mustard jar that's empty, right? You open the jar. And, and after you cooked, you put the oil in the jar. And when the jar is filled, you put the lid on the jar and you throw it in the trash. That's what you do with the cooking oil. You do not throw the cooking oil in the sink. If you do that, you're going to eventually clog the sink. And you're going to notice that all of the, the shit in the, in the sink is coming back up. Now, now, if you have a property, some people say that you can do it in the backyard. I don't like doing it in the backyard because it's still there. And over time, it makes a, a nasty puddle. So, so I don't like throwing it in the backyard. Theoretically, it is possible, right? Uh, but the best thing to do, as I mentioned, you take a jar, you put the cooking oil in the jar, you lock the jar, and then you put the jar into the trash once you're done. Uh, also do the same with grease. So if you cook something greasy, even if it doesn't have oil, do the same. No, I don't drink my cooking oil. Jesus fucking Christ. Now, now if you have recycling rules, this one is moronic. Yes, like theoretically, I, I, I don't even know what to do if you have recycling rules, honestly. So, so uh, there are recycling rules where it says that... Um, you need trash that's only glass, you need trash that's only plastic, and then you have your waste. I I don't know, I, I guess... Like, like, theoretically, you're not supposed to leave uh, the jar with the cooking oil inside the waste. But you're not supposed to leave it at the glass either. So, theoretically, you just open the jar and dump it into the fucking garbage when you're done, but it's disgusting. I, I, I have no answer for this. I have absolutely no answer. It doesn't matter how, how less grease you use. It still pens up, right? Like, you, you're eventually, you're still going to have a jar full of it. Uh, Kill Vic, fatherly advice for when you're a dad. Kids don't always listen to logic. I thought the same, but learn from experience. It's not so simple. No, 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 it's, it's true. Yeah, like, obviously, they're not always going to learn from logic. Uh, but when they get to a certain age, they, they will start to. And even then, it, it's a lot better to use logic than to not use logic. Because at the end of the day, they, they don't learn from anything, right? Uh, I never use cooking oil. I, I, I don't fucking care if you used it or not. My point is, for those that do use cooking oil, because not everyone is like you, boomer. 
Some people do use cooking oil. That That is the way to get rid of it. Like I was asked, like, how do you get rid of cooking oil? And you put it in a jar. That is the correct way. With recycling rules, you soak it up with towels and throw it into the residual waste. Oh my fucking god, no. I'm sorry. No, I, I would refuse to do that. You, you can't have that law in Romania. People will not do it. It's, it's, Jesus, like, can you imagine how time consuming it is? And how many towels you need to destroy in order to soak up the cooking oil? Fuck that shit. No. I would literally just throw it into the bag. Like I would just have it a, a, an entire glass of cooking oil. And when I'm done, I, I just dump it in. I, I don't fucking care. And if they complain, then yeah, just, just go out and, uh, and have your jar and then just dump it onto the ground, onto the soil. I, I, I am not doing that. I'm not taking paper towels and soaking up the green. Oh, fuck off. Um, just drink it. If you want to drink that shit, go for it. You know, but, but trust me, it's not good for your health. I don't throw out old cooking oil. So many uses for it on a farm. Yeah, but not, not everyone lives on a farm, so... <laughs> Putting in a jar would be a disaster in my country. It will 100% end up sprayed on the street when the hobo starts rummaging through the trash container. And then you put a lock on the fucking trash container. <laughs> in the UK, it's pretty fucked up. My body has five different trash receptacles. Yeah, I mean, we, they're already trying to force this on Romania to have, like, three trash receptacles. No one does it. But why the fuck five, though? Like, three is... Okay, so you have, like, your normal waste. You got your paper waste, and you got your plastic waste. Oh, yeah, and you have your glass waste, so it's four. What, what, what the fuck is the fifth? But what are, what are five receptacles do they have? Um, anyway... And before you ask, government make it illegal for hobos to stop digging on the trash. Yeah, I'm sure. What, what are they going to do? Give them a fine? Yeah, I'm sure they're going to pay it. You, you, can, you can garnish the hobo's wages if they don't pay it. Of course. Um, bio waste. Yeah, if I put grease in the yard, I would have a pack of coyotes eating it. Then put it in someone else's yard. Come on, like... I, Everyone comes with their own problems that can be solved in 10 seconds. Uh, I recall one was for protein waste. Jesus. Anyway, right, let's talk about Boogie. Boogie, Boogie actually said something interesting. And I, and I will make a video about it. For the baby fun, Daddy V. Say hello to Piba. I appreciate it, Winston. Thank you. Uh, all right. Let's um let's talk about Boogie. Where where is Boogie? Boogie, the fence sitter. The fence has cracked underneath Boogie. Okay, so Boogie basically makes a very controversial statement, which enrages a lot of people on the left. He says that uh, video games are supposed to be fun. Not lectures about why being a white man is bad. They didn't like this chat. They don't like it at all. Uh, now, now here, here's what the left likes to do, okay? And no one calls it out because no one... Like, everyone knows what they do, but they don't know how to articulate it into words. It's kind of like when, in 2014, people were saying, we want games to not be political. And what did the left do? Did they look at the spirit of what you're trying to communicate? No, they do their linguistic bullshit. They, they look at the words. And they're like, oh, but what is political? What do you mean? Everything is political, right? Like, The Witcher is political because it's about an empire. And every game that came out is political. Ah, you're nonsense. You're talking bullshit. When people were just trying to say, uh, can you stop current daying the video games, fucked up. We are sick and tired of our garbage, far-left, radical, extremist politics being stuffed down our throats, ruining immersion in every single fucking video game. Everywhere you look, it's like a fucking Democrat. It's like fucking Nancy Pelosi in my computer screen lecturing me about her bullshit issues. I don't vote for her. I don't want her to lecture me. Do you not understand? 
I know that you hate women, but I don't want you to remove the word woman from my game. What is with this body type A, body type crap? What 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 is with like oh uh, COVID is around, so Superman has to wear a mask? Are you fucking retarded? Like are, are you literally that brain dead that you do not know what I actually am trying to say here? Like this is what I mean. It's like. Uh, oh, and then, let's see, new pronouns, Zerker just dropped. Oh, now they're into my fucking video games, because in California they're in fashion, right? If Portland does it, then I have to fucking do it from Romania, because I'm connected to fucking Portland through the video games. Portland shoves their cock into the video game through my asshole, right? Like, this is what it's about? That's what we were trying to say, you dipshits. But of course, they're like, no, let's, like, let's look at the language, let's look at the words, let's look at... Right, so, so when Bookie says... Video games are supposed to be fun, not lectures about why being a white man is bad. They do the same shit. They do not try to understand the spirit of what Boogie is trying to communicate. They're like, oh, can you give me an example? Uh, do you have an example? Source, source, what is your source? And it's like, obviously, there is no video game where a character goes up a podium and says, white man bad. Right, like, you're not going to find that example. But you are going to find examples, like, in Life is Strange, where a MAGA hat white guy is beating up immigrant kids. You are going to find examples where people behind the scenes making the video game say, oh, we don't want to hire white people because uh, they commit microaggressions. What microaggressions? I assume, like, saying, hey, maybe you shouldn't put a, a MAGA guy... Uh, Biddy Immigrant Kids, because MAGA guy may want to buy our game as well. Right? Uh, you, you notice a trend where if the game has a white protagonist, there are journalists freaking out about that. Like, they can't sleep at night because that is taking place. It's like, why is the Witcher white? Why, why can't the Witcher be black? Why? Right? You notice the hostility. You notice the vindictiveness. Every single ca like like there are video games that you play where every single villain is a white guy, to the point that it breaks immersion because you're playing the game and you see the white character and you're like, okay, this guy is either going to be incompetent or a villain or both. And you're fucking right, time and time again. You know, th th there can't be any plot twists. There can't be any surprises. Like once you understand this, once you once you know the mentality of the people making these video games, you can actively predict their plot to the point where the game becomes boring and stale. It, it, it's kind of like, uh, if you know how Apple does commercials in movies, right? So like, <clears throat> if you didn't know this, I will break every single movie to you from now on. If you see a person using an Apple product in a Hollywood movie, that person can never be the villain because Apple does not allow negative characters to use their product because they believe that people will associate the villain with the product, right? So like, for example, in Breaking Bad, you would never see Gustavo Frigg with an iPhone. And once you understand this, right, like if you're watching a movie and you see the villain, the alleged villain of the movie using an Apple product, now you know that there's going to be a plot twist at some point. There's going to be a, a voila. He's actually the good guy. He's actually, right? And, and when you understand this, it's the same when you know the, the, the progressive mindset. I had this story ruined when I was playing Disco Elysium. So I'm playing Disco Elysium and, and you're, you're supposed to be this police officer and uncover a mystery, a crime that was committed. And literally every single thing points to the criminal as being a lesbian woman of color, <clears throat> right? And I was like, there's no fucking way. It, it is no fucking way that she is the criminal. Because I knew the people who made the game. They were Marxists. And I was like, there is no way in hell that they are going to make this character the villain. The entire purpose of the game is for you to solve a mystery. Is is for it's, it's trying to challenge you, in order to figure out if you have the power to 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 solve this mystery. Right, like it's a, you know, putting a strain on your mind, trying to see are you smart enough to do it. So every single arrow was pointing to this one, and I was like, nope, no, that I, there is no way. And guess what? Guess what? Plot twist. 
She wasn't the villain. The game just tries to make you arrest her so that you feel bad about it. But in reality, you can't even predict who the villain is. Like, like that is such a plot twist that even if you were to pay attention to every single line of dialogue, even if you were to be like the, the best trained investigator in the fucking world, if you're Sherlock Holmes that, that has a kid with Batman after getting fucked in the ass, even that kid would not be able to predict the, 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 the ending of this game because it comes out of nowhere. Apparently, it was just like some sniper dude that, that was like a vindic had the, some vindictiveness, not even to the guy personally, but it was ideologically motivated. So he just shoots him from like five kilometers away. Uh, and the people that were even in that hotel where the guy died, none of them were guilty. None of them were guilty. And you're investigating them, right? Like you're not thinking, oh, but maybe there's like the sniper like from a hundred miles away that just is a crazy person, right? Like, like literally, that, that, that's the whole thing. Like, you have three uh, to four suspects that would have potentially killed the person. You got, like, a, a, a chick that... Uh, the, the, the story is that this was, like, a corpo soldier guy, you know, like a corpo enforcer, right? So, so he gets shot in an apartment. Sorry, not in an apartment, in a hotel, in an inn. And one of the suspects was the, the whore he was banging. I think he was, she was actually, like, a woman of low mortal five. Like, he actually paid her, you know, right? So, like, she could have been a suspect. Uh, there was another guy that he owned money. Uh, there was another person that I think it was, like, an illegal immigrant. Oh, yeah, th this is, like, the, the lesbian, which, which apparently, like, w was upset because of how he mistreated that girl. Uh, and, and there was, like, I, I think, like, some other illegal person. Whatever. Like, there were, like, four suspects. So, the entire game is focused around you trying to figure out which one of these suspects did it. None of them did it because it was like some sniper that was outside of the hotel. And the only reason he shot him because like he, he just hated the corporation and he, he's like a crazy person, right? But, but my point is, I knew that it wasn't the person that the game was directing me to simply because of the ideology of the people that made that game. Does that make sense? It threw his immersion. I'm better at ranting than AZ. I'm pretty sure AZ is good at ranting as well. He was just taken out of context. A bit off topic, but legal mindset will be watching live on stream the Pippa documentary in two days. <laughs> is the Pippa documentary good? Because I haven't seen it. Um, hello, chat. Hello, V. Buy a Bully the Wimp t-shirt to fund V's game. Buy a shirt after your shirt chat. Bobby Morgan with Morales. I, I don't know if the chat actually knows these references, Christopher. Um, let me, hold on. Let me, let me show you why I think Matt Walsh's video about Gamer Game was so good. So I want you to see... <clears throat> The absolute state of the the video games, right? All right, so a few months ago... Shut up. Uh, the dark side of the video game industry? I think this is it. Okay. So, so here's a statistic that, at least if you were born at any point prior to the 1990s... All right. Was mercifully look, at, look at this video game, chat. Just, just look at it, right? Look at this shit. This is called uh, Life is Strange. And by the way, like, let me, let me put it this way. On Steam, this is the rules if you want to release a game on Steam. You are not allowed to have anything sexual done to a minor on Steam. There have been many games that were banned due to this, right? So, like, no sex with minors in video games on Steam. Even if it's censored, even if it's implied... And definitely, no school setting for this, right? So, like, even if the characters are over 18, no school setting. And there have been many Japanese games that were banned. Like, there was a Japanese game had nothing to do with sex, but it took place in a school. And uh, the, the students, I think, like, were attacked by demons, and they had to defend themselves with various weapons, and it's a bloody game. It's adult, but because of the, na the, the blood, the violence, banned on Steam. Let's look at Life is Strange. What is what is the, the setting of Life is Strange? 
girls on a campus, uh, sorry, girls on a high school, not a, a high school, end up disappearing. So they're getting raped and murdered. That is the, pl the plot, right? And you have to figure out who did it. Plot twist is the white guy, the straight white guy is the one who did it. Um, he, he's a teacher, right? That game is on Steam. Breaks all the fucking rules. All the rules are broken. I was on Steam. Japanese games banned. So my point is, you, you notice, it's like, oh, what is woke? Woke is when you have the people that make the game and they can bypass the terms of service on major platforms. I'm not even saying whether or not these games should be allowed or not. All I'm saying is like, can you enforce the rules equally? I, I, you don't want that? Fine. Fine. I mean, I'm... By all means, okay, no, nothing sexual if it's minors, right? So, like, no American slasher films. Because those used to be the same. Like, Cabin in the Woods type of movies, right? You had, like, the teenagers going around on, um, on, on various trips... And there's a killer in the woods, and, uh, you know, the teenagers, they still have sexy time a little bit, and then they get to, to run away as Jason Voorhees tries to stab them with the knife or whatever. I grew up with those movies. They were very popular. But you don't want that. Okay, okay, but, like, why is that this one gets a pass? What, what, the, what does it have that allows it to get a pass? That's my question. And the answer is woke ideology. That's why... PlayStation allows The Last of Us, where Abby has an actual sex scene, which is very descriptive and vulgar, uh, but other romance Japanese games that are wholesome, but they show a little bit of skin, they have to be censored. Woke ideology. Like, the push is there. You get to notice it. It's, it's, it's so painfully obvious. Anyway, let's look at this game. You kidnapped me. Nice try. Right. But I know who you are and what you did in Seattle. I saw it in the paper. Maybe I should call ICE to make sure you're a citizen. Fuck you, Hillbilly. I'm American. <clears throat> Watch it, punk. Whatever. You're going to jail for this. Pretty sure the local police will vouch for me over a thug like you. And by the way, the, the entire story is that uh, the cops shoot the, the dad, right? So, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, they were playing in the yard, and one of them had ketchup on, on his shirt, so the cop thought that, that he stabbed uh, a, another kid. The cop pulls the gun and says, stop, freeze. And of course, like, the, the, at least even the liberals... Even, even the, the unhinged progressives that are far left and are pushing this anti-cop idea, even they have to agree that, okay, well, we can't just have the guy stop and, and follow police orders. No, instead, he, he rushes towards the police officer, and, and that's when the father gets shot. But, like, seriously, I, I was playing this game on a live stream, and I was like, well, why are they acting so retarded? It's like, well, yeah, you have ketchup on your shirt. The police doesn't know it's not blood, right? He just, he just got there. He, he saw two kids fighting, and I think, like, one of them had scissors. And, and your shirt is white and has ketchup. Yeah, the cop is going to think that you just got stabbed, so he's going to put the gun at the other kid. At that point, the other kid, what, what he has to do is to follow the instructions 100%. The cop says, stop, you stop. It's like, until the misunderstanding gets sorted, you are in a dangerous situation. Like, you, it is life or death, yes. God. If Steam doesn't let you sell your game in Australia, will you have a website to buy it? Or will you forgive me for pirating it? I give a super chat for the same value. Uh, if, you, if you can't buy it, you can just message me and I'll give you a CD key. Like, if you're from one of those countries where you literally can't buy it. Uh, again, I, I already told people, look, I can't stop you from pirating a game. I, obviously, I cannot. But if you want a sequel, if you want more content... Well, you better hope that I make even. If I break even with this game and you actually like it, then I will make a sequel. But if I don't break even and I lose a lot of money for doing the game, then I'm not going to make a sequel. It's, it's very simple. It's not rocket science. I, I, I'm not going to start complaining about piracy and whatnot. 
I can't stop the weather. I can't change the, 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 the way the storm goes. But it is pretty simple. Yeah, especially due to the nature of the game and uh, how difficult it is to advertise it and, and how difficult it is to publish it. I hope that I manage to make at least a couple of thousands worth of sales. And if I can't make that, well, it's not going to be a sequel. Which is fair, you know, if the game is shit, then by all means, refund it. I, I fully support it. If you guys think that the game is bad, if you don't like it and you bought it, I, I don't mind refunding it. Um, but I, I have confidence that it's a good product. I, I have a feeling that you guys will like it and you are not going to refund it. So there's that. Uh, but if you're in an evil country like China, Germany, or Australia, then, yeah, I, I understand the situation. So just by messaging me, it's going to be enough. You, you're going to get a copy. I am not going to ask proof of residence. Like, the game is not that expensive. I think, like, my publisher is trying to persuade me to sell it for 25 I mean, if it's 25 bucks in a in an age where video games cost uh, 90 dollars, and it, it got more than like three hours of of cutscenes, the entire game should be around 20 hours to play. It's got eight different endings. It's got a lot of replayability. Uh, hopefully, I think it's worth the money. Now, it's up to you. Uh, sorry, I just removed the super chat. My bad. Here is your body back. Wait, can you do that? Also, going to buy your game of course. Thank you, Rail Raven. Um, I don't think you removed it. I think you actually gave me more than you should. Uh, I know very little. I wish you luck in the endeavor. Why, thank you. I appreciate the siege. Uh, Germany doesn't ban hentai games anymore. Uh, okay, I, I will tell you what's happening with Pornhub as well. So, uh, recently, uh, Pornhub has been banned on Texas, right? Um, and a lot of people are spreading false, dangerous, and harmful Russian misinformation Suggesting that the reason Pornhub is pulling away from Texas is because Texas is asking for age verification. And because Pornhub uh, wants kids to watch the website, that's why they pulled out. No, that's not what's happening, all right? Uh, Texas is asking for ID, right? So, like, if you want to go and watch Pornhub, you, you, you're supposed to show ID. Uh, the problem is that if they do that, like, first of all, you don't stop people watching porn on the internet. If you want to see porn on the internet, you can go on Twitter, right? Like, Twitter still has it. Like, there are other places that don't require ID. So you can still see it there. And, and even if the internet was entirely locked down and you needed ID and everything, when I was a kid, there were people at school, yes, at the high school, that were sell were giving you CDs with that shit or floppy disks. Like, like you... Many countries have tried outlawing and banning the practice. It doesn't work. Even in China right now, I have people on my server from China. And, and they still partake into the hobby. You cannot ban it. Now, the thing is, if you require an ID for people to log, then the government can see what you search for. The government can see what you're into. And given the nature of the content, it is incredibly shameful. Right? Like, there is no conversation that you can have with your mother at the breakfast table over what you watch. Everyone watches porn. This is why it's a trillion dollar industry. Everyone fucking watches it. Okay? Even the women. Yes. But no one wants to know that... Uh, uh, no one wants to know... <clears throat> sorry. No, uh, people... Sh uh, no one wants other people to know that they watch it. Yes. Like, no one wants other people to know that they watch it. Because every time... Someone is exposed, everyone else acts shocked, and then they're, they're laughing, and it's like, oh my god, ah, look at what you're into. Oh, you're into Brazilian fart veteran. Oh, ha, 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 ha. you know, like, like, that is pretty much what it is. Imagine the power that the government gets if they were to be able to filter your preferences. I mean, on Pornhub, everything is legal, right? Like, they, they do not have, as far as I know, they don't have illegal stuff. Like, they, they actually had to curate their website a couple of years ago. But but even if you're, like, into normal stuff, right? Like, if you're into... I, I, I don't know. Uh, men that get pegged or some shit. You know? It's like, the moment it's exposed. The moment it's exposed, your life can be over. Good luck explaining it to the HR lady. Good luck explaining it... Uh, if you're a woman and you're into uh, Redo of Healer, yeah, good luck... Cleaning your OA, your reputation after that, right? Like, like any, any type of fetish that, that is not just normal and vanilla 
is going to be the laughter and the mockery. And you can't explain away that shit. If you're into lactation, if you're into pregnant women, I don't fucking know. Right? Go on Wikipedia and look at the fucking list and tell me which one of them is acceptable in the public. Um, what well, you think that if, if if it comes out that you're into feet and people uh, at the workplace find out they won't laugh at you? You you, you think that everyone is going to be serious? Uh, well, uh, you know, Chris Tickle is into feet. Uh, that, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, Ridu of Healer is an anime which is very popular with the women. Uh, the creator didn't expect this popularity. Uh, it's a revenge story. Uh, the main character is a guy. And um, he gets abused and molested by women. So, so like you have all these women that, that were like the princesses, the queen. They tie him up. They, they drug him. They pee on him. They beat him up. Like, like they, 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 um, they peg him. They, they, they do all of these unspeakable things to the hero. And then the hero eventually um, resets time. So, so he, he, uh, he, he goes back in time before this happened and, and he rapes his rapists. Now, now again, a, a hugely controversial anime. Incredibly. I mean, on the West, oh my fucking God, it came up during the feminist times. It's, oh, my, Jesus. It encourages the patriarch. This is where the patriarchy draws its strength from. It's like the, the Green Lantern or Noah and all of the patriarchy soldiers go and they charge themselves from this anime, right? Um, turns out it was extremely popular with the women. Extremely so. To the point where... Uh, I, I think it was like more than 30% of, of the people that were watching it were female. The, and this is from the anime creator, like, like he's got the analytics of the, the people that were buying the stuff, so, uh, and he actually said, it's like, the reason that women like it is because it's the revenge trope, where, where you have a person that's being, um, oppressed, and, and they, then they manage to, to stand up to their oppressors, I, I think like that's, but anyway, right, the, the, the interesting thing is that he also said that the, the anime that are the least popular with women, so the one that doesn't get any traction at all, uh, the harem anime, right? So, like, the, the, the anime, usually the isekai, and you have one guy, and there's, like, six or seven women that are lusting for him. Uh, women don't like that. Like, that, that is the genre of anime that is almost uh, specifically for young men. Uh, examples of this would be... I think Konosuba, yeah, like Konosuba would probably, mm. um, maybe ReZero, uh, but, 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 yeah, like, like, when you have one guy surrounded by nine or ten women, and they're all lusting for him, like, women don't like those animes. I don't know if it's like they don't like the competition, I think, like, they, they, uh, they get immersion broken, because, like, women in real life don't behave like that towards men, so... What about the reverse? I don't know if there's anime like that. Is there an anime where you have a girl and there's like eight or nine guys around her? I, I, I mean, maybe there are. I, I genuinely don't know. As I've gotten older, harem anime have gotten boring. Yes, because anime is spread into four parts. So you have anime for teenagers, anime for old men. Sorry, anime for teenagers, anime for men. Anime for little girls and anime for, for women. So so the reason harem anime have gotten boring for you is because you grew up. Like when you're a teenager and you have your hormones raging and you never touched a booby in your life. And you've never been with a woman. A harem anime is, is amazing. Right? It's like it's absolutely amazing. Because again, like you, you've never seen a naked titty in, in your life. You've never seen how a pussy looks like. So so you, you, you have like this anime harem and it's like all these women are around. But once you grow up, once you get married and, and you know how a booby looks like, you know how a pussy looks like, you know how a woman behaves, all of these had a bad anime become boring, right? But they're not made for you. Like, it's fine. Just how you enjoyed them when you were a kid, let other people enjoy them now. Yeah, like prison school, right? Prison school is like that. When you're, when you're a teenager, you like prison school. When you're older, you look at prison school and you're like, what is this nonsense? Right? 
But that's a bit like, like I, I see a lot of people going, oh, well, just because I don't like it, it should be banned. No. You used to like it. Allow other people to like it now. Um, do you plan to bail on the D&D campaign like you bailed from vampires? I'm trying to understand why you're doing the silly stuff. I'm not trying to bail from it. What silly stuff did I do last time? Villainous animes have become kind of popular lately. Uh, there's also like the, the hole in the market, right? Now because Hollywood is trying to have like the strong woman trope and they're moving away from women are evil, uh, women are evil becomes what the market ca craves, right? So so just because like there aren't any shows like that is why if every single uh, movie or if every single TV show had like evil women in it, then the villainous anime wouldn't be a thing. Uh, anyway, right, so, uh, I, I think I'll end it here. Uh, telling the Baron that you are basically a mutant. Well, the thing was that, um, it's going to be a couple of levels until I actually have wings growing from my back. So, it's, it's good to have, like, people that are in power and they at least know, oh, right, so there's this guy and they, they will be like, okay, well, maybe I can, um... Maybe I can put a good word for them so they don't get lynched. Uh, anyway, right. I will I will see you later. Uh, thank you for watching. I'm going to go upload the videos on my other channels now. So take care.